Hey guys, welcome back to MPG channel, uh, Medical Billing TV, in which here we are going to discuss about the medical billing industry. Um, in my previous video, we discussed about the medical billing revenue cycle management, which will give you the idea about the medical billing industry. So, we do have now the idea about the departments, all the departments includes in medical billing industry, like uh, LSB department, MP department, coding department, charge posting department, payment posting department, insurance company, receipt of claim and uh, AI department and we had learned about the responsibilities of all the departments in my previous video. So, because now we will have an idea about this industry and uh, all departments, so now we will go some key in which we will explain the terminology abruptly which is used in this industry. So, we should have a knowledge about all the terminologies so that we can realize those terminology and we can understand what exactly it means. Otherwise, we, we don't know about this. We, we cannot communicate with anything. So, right here, we will discuss about the medical billing glossary in this video. So, let's start with the medical billing glossary. I will start with Medicare. Medicare is nothing, it's a insurance which provides the insurance, health insurance to the US citizens. It is run by the federal government or central government. It is taken care by the, it is controlled by the central government. It is a plan, it is developed uh, to assist. US citizens, those who are not capable to have health insurance. It is the responsibility of central government to take care of their citizens, those who are not in the condition to have uh, health insurance. It is so how we can get this insurance. If I am the US citizen and I am I have um, I have reached to the age of 65 or I have crossed the age of 65 so I am eligible to have Medicare plan. And then Medicare the central government will take care of my health expenses. Okay. The second category also is the permanent disabled. If the US citizen is permanently disabled, suppose I lost my one leg, so I am permanently disabled. So in that case as well, whether we are past the age of 65 or not, but we are eligible to take this plan. Suppose in the age of 25, I lost my leg. Due to some reason or due to the accident, I lost my leg and now I don't have my leg. So I am permanently disabled, but I am not meeting this criteria of 65 or above 65. In that case, even though I will be eligible for the Medicare plan, ESRD, it is known as end stage renal diseases. If doctor finds that patient is having an end stage renal diseases in which he will not live more than the more than the minimum, this disease will be permanently along with the patient and there is no medical treatment for that uh, that disease like I do have a cancer and it is in an end stage so I, I, I don't have any treatment for that so in that case as well we are eligible for the Medicare so a US citizen if 65 or above 65 he is eligible for health plan if Patient is permanently disabled, even though he can go for Medicare plan and if patient having end stage renal diseases, 
even though he is eligible for the Medicare. So that is the Medicare plan. Medicare plan is very easy to understand. First of all, it is governed by the or regulated by the state government, not by the federal government. It is run by the state government. They will take care of this plan. They will have fund for this plan. Okay? Who? State government. Alright. So, it is another health plan which is offered to those people who are living to the below poverty line. Those can have, those are not able to purchase a health insurance plan because their income is such a less. In that case as well, the state government will be responsible to take the responsibility of such people, of such US citizens and then they provide the health insurance benefit to the member. They will decide the poverty line as per the state and each state varies the poverty line. The simple is that the Medicaid is the health plan which is governed by the state government and it is provided by those people who are living at the poverty line of that state are eligible for that plan. Alright, so we have discussed here about Medicaid. Now we will talk about CMS. CMS is nothing but a uh, center of Medicare and Medicaid services. It is a regulatory system which regulates all the health insurances, whether it's a commercial, whether it's a federal health plan. Like in India, we do have a tri savvy, savvy regulates all the banking activities, whether it's a commercial, whether it's a uh, private bank, or whether it's a government bank. They they issue the guidelines, they create the rules and regulations to the bank, bank so that they can make sure that we are the bank, the insurance of the or the health, the bank is providing a um, good level of services to the, the, to the members. Like that as well, it is the authority which regulates commercial insurance and the federal insurance. They create the policies and everything to make sure the patient is getting a healthy treatment for the, from the doctor. So that is CMS provider. As the name suggests, provider. Provider means simple is that, that who is providing the services. Here, doctor is providing services. So in the medical terminology, we call a doctor as a provider. So sometimes when we make a call to a company, we'll say that we are calling for provider office. We can use that we are calling from doctor office, but it is also a term which we use in medical industry for the doctor. It just you know, denotes a doctor. So the provider provider technology is used for the doctor because he is providing services to the patient. This point is case. Claims means it is nothing but a doctor's bill. Doctor's bill which we need to bill to the insurance company or to the patient. Again, the services which we have rendered to the patient. When doctor is rendering the services, he is supposed to get the payment. And uh, in that case, doctor first provides the treatment and after that, they will bill to the if patient has an insurance company, they will bill to the insurance company or if patient is not having insurance company, then they will bill directly to the patient. So that bill is known as claim because doctor is not claiming for his services what he rendered on the patient. Now the next point is bill amount. And now we will see the what is the amount. It is nothing a total charges for which we doctor is claiming. Like we have entered some services and the 
total charges is hundred dollar of that claim. So that claim, that total charges is known as bill amount. So every security code, like we discussed already, for all the services, for all the treatment, it is predefined charge amount already in a software. When a charge software will enter the charges in the system, it will automatically pick the bill amount. That is known as a bill amount. A total claim for the a total charges for the claim is bill amount. All right. Okay. So the next point is allowed amount. This is allowed amount. Now before we uh, explain you the allowed amount, I will jump to the eighth point, which is fee schedule. The fee schedule is nothing. But it is a predefined amount for each CPT by the insurance company. Like the bill amount is predefined by the doctor side. Doctor can bill according to his software. That is bill amount. But insurance company has also a list of all the treatment and. Against that treatment, they do have their fixed amount. Like doctor bill for hundred dollar claim, but that CPT code or that procedure or that treatment, insurance company will pay a less amount or uh, they will not exactly pay the same amount whatever doctor is paying. They will pay according to the predefined account amount. For one services, for instance, for one services. Doctor bill for hundred dollar, but as per their fee schedule, they supposed to pay eighty dollar. Okay, so insurance company is supposed to pay eighty dollar as per their fee schedule. So insurance company will responsible for eighty dollar only. They will follow up their fee schedule. So what is fee schedule? Fee schedule nothing, but it is a predefined amount against the all treatment by the insurance company. Each insurance company may have their own fee schedule accordingly, or they can use a Medicare or Medicare fee schedule as well. So there is a fee schedule. Now we'll come back to the allowed amount. So as the name suggests, that allowed amount, allowed amount is nothing. It is the paid amount by the insurance company as per the fee schedule. As per the fee schedule, what they supposed to pay. It means we are going to allow to pay that amount. Hundred dollar bill, that's the bill amount. They as per the schedule, they are supposed to pay eighty dollar. So eighty dollar is that allowed amount. Okay. So they when they when they verify the fee schedule, they comes to know they are supposed to pay eighty dollar. So it means that it is the allowed amount. So so far we have covered Medicare, Medicaid, CMS provider, claim, bill amount, allowed amount, fee schedule. All right. Okay. Now the next one is paid amount. As the name suggests, that paid amount. So the paid amount is means as the name suggests, the paid amount is that amount which is paid by the insurance company or by the Patient, that is paid amount. It could be possible that sometimes whatever insurance can be allowed, it will be equal to the paid amount. But sometimes it may be different. Like insurance company here will take the example, bill amount one hundred dollar, but as per the fee schedule, they are supposed to pay eighty dollar. So the paid amount could be. Eighty dollar or could be less than eighty dollar. We will we will we will use some other terms. We will there are some other. All right. So we are discussing we will discuss about the paid amount. Now we will go for the next topic, which is contractual adjustment. Now what is contractual adjustment? Before we go to that uh, that terminology, I'll go for a jump out to the next point, which is part billing provider. Or in network provider and non-participating provider or out-of-network provider. It is very simple. 
for a parts bidding provider. First of all, actually it is a contract with insurance company and the service provider, it means doctor. It is a contract between insurance company and the provider in which they are agree. Doctor is agree that whatsoever they are going to allow on this claim as per their fee schedule, they will they will uh, take it as a full and final payment and they will not ask about the rest of the amount which is disallowed amount which is not allowed in their case the allowed amount the provider bill amount was hundred dollar the allowed amount was eighty dollar so there is a difference hundred dollar less eighty dollar twenty dollar that is a disallowed amount which is not allowed by the insurance company so that is the insurance so now here when the doctor is participating with the insurance company he is supposed to get only $80 and he is supposed to adjust off the remaining balance he may not ask to the patient for $20 that we build insurance company for $100 but they just pay to us $80 so we are supposed to pay the balance we cannot ask because we are contracted with insurance company likewise now we can easily understand non-participating or out of the provider this is the provider we are not accepting or we give our patient or issue provider is not having any contract with insurance company. In that case, they will not follow the allowed amount. They will they will ask about the full amount. If insurance company is not paying the remaining balance, so he can bill to the patient. He will have full rights to bill to the patient. But nowadays sometimes what happens that doctor wants to bill their patients. And for that one, that thing, they may bill to the patient and they may bill not to the patient. It's up to the doctor wish or the billing, uh, billing team whether they want to bill to the patient or not for the remaining balance. So that this allowed amount is known as contractual adjustment. It means that we are in a contract to adjust those disallowed amounts. So that is a contractual adjustment. What's passing partner? Those who are those providers who are accepting a contract with insurance company, to accepting a full and final payment, whatsoever paid by the insurance company as per their allowed amount. And non-participating are those providers who are not accepting the allowed amount of the insurance company and they want a full payment from the from the patient from the patient or from other insurance. So that is what, and that this allowed amount, which is not allowed by the insurance company, is contractual adjustment, and doctor is supposed to adjust if doctor is participating. It is optional in non-participating provider. So we have discussed here paid amount, contractual adjustment, participating provider, in a provider, and and the non-par or alternate provider. All right, guys. So we are discussing about the we have discussed about the bill amount, allowed amount, disallowed amount, contractual adjustment, and a paid amount. So now here we go to understand it by the example. Like a doctor built a claim of hundred dollar. A claim is the total charges of the claim is hundred dollars. So the that is known as bill amount. A total claim, a total charges of the claim is the bill amount. So doctor bill a claim to the insurance company for hundred dollar. Insurance company receives the claim. They find that they evaluate with their fee schedule that what is the they supposed to pay for that treatment. They find that the for that treatment as per their fee schedule the allowed amount is eighty dollar. So they will pay eighty dollar as per their fee schedule. So the remaining twenty dollar, the remaining twenty dollar is the contractual adjustment, or that is the amount which is not allowed by the insurance company. So that is the disallowed amount. So if the doctor is contracted with the insurance company, they are supposed to pay. They are supposed to enter them. They are supposed to accept that paid amount as a full and final payment 
and he will not ask that remain twenty dollar from the patient or from other insurance company. All right. So what will happen that we will make claim for twenty dollar. We receive the payment of eighty dollar as per the fee schedule, and then we will enter the payment into our software. And once we enter the that thing, we will write off that amount as well. So hundred dollar we post the payment that we receive the payment in, and this is we have adjusted off. So the the remaining amount is zero. The account has been closed now. For that services, we have received the payment, and the account has been closed. So we will move to other chains. Now we are going to start the other technology, which is frequently used in the medical billing industry. That is the copay. Copay is nothing. It is actually it is a contract between patient and the insurance company. The participating, participating or non-participating was the contract with the insurance and doctor. Now where is the contract with the fee with the patient and the insurance company, in which patient is ready to accept that he will pay from his pocket. He will pay for each visit, um, minimum or nominal amount for the each visit for every visit. Whenever he is going to visit to the doctor from his own pocket, it could be. A uh, fifty dollar, it could be twenty five dollar, it could be a hundred fifty dollar. It depends upon their specialty where we are going. So that is the amount which is paid by the patient. From the from the uh, patient from his own pocket, it is a cost sharing tool in which insurance want to for insurance want patient to participate. In the payment and the doctor's payment as well. It is depend upon plan to plan. A good plan we are taking, so these cost sharing tools could be minimized. If we are good, if we are paying a heavy premium, if we are paying less premium, so the cost sharing tool will come up in the role. So that insurance company also make it part, uh, make it make the patient participate in the payment. So simple. Whenever patient is going to visit. To the doctor, he will pay a nominal amount. It is fixed by the insurance company. He is supposed to pay that amount every visit. So, insurance company will not pay anything. Insurance company will not pay the portion of the copay out of the allowed amount. Like the case was that uh, the allowed amount was eighty dollar, and the copay is twenty dollar. So, insurance company will be responsible just for sixty dollar, not for twenty dollar. All right, here we go. That is hundred dollar. Allowed amount is eighty dollar. So the case now there is copay applied in this, which is twenty dollar. So who supposed to pay that amount? A patient supposed to pay that amount from his pocket. So the insurance company will pay just sixty dollar. They will just pay a sixty dollar. So the out of the allowed amount. The twenty dollar is responsible for patient. Twenty plus sixty, eighty dollar. That is the allowed amount which insurance company is ready to pay. And this, the remaining twenty dollar is a perpetual adjustment. And then the account has been balanced. So here is an is an example in which the pay amount is less than the allowed amount, which I was talking about. Where the pay amount pay amount may be equal to the allowed amount, or it could be. Different from the allowed amount. So here we have understand that what is copay. Copay is nothing but there is a fixed, it is a predefined amount which is paid by the patient from his own pocket. It is a normal amount and uh, it is a contract between patient and the insurance company and it's a cost sharing tool. So this is what actually a copay amount. We supposed to pay for each visit. All right. Okay, friends. You know that uh, glossary is a very huge portion. Actually, we do have a lot of knowledge here, and uh, we can't cover in a one one video or one day. So I don't want to make it confusing in the terminology because you then it will mix up with one uh, one term with other terms. What we do? We'll cover the rest of the portions in the next video. Meanwhile, guys, you know that uh, you can go to my channel. and the channel medical video channel you can like it you can subscribe it you can share it and you can make a comment on that thing if you do have any 
issues coming up or if you have a better idea to explain something please i'm open for that thing and uh, wait for the next video let's see thank you